So good morning. Uh, my name is Tess Brannon. I'm a postdoc at Berkeley, but today I'm actually going to talk to you about a technology I developed while I was in graduate school um, in Alice Ting's lab, and the technology is Turbo ID, which has enabled proteomic mapping in several new contexts, including in plants. So several key questions about the molecular mechanisms that underlie cell biology surround proteins. So what are the targets of this enzyme? What proteins compose the structure? Where are these proteins in the cell and what other proteins are interacting with them there? Uh, traditional approaches to answer such questions like immunoprecipitation and biochemical fractionation have enabled countless discoveries, uh, but they also have some serious limitations. They often miss transient or weak interactions, which can sometimes be the most important in a biological process, and they often suffer from contamination and loss of material. So to further address these questions, our lab, the Ting Lab, and others have been developing new approaches called proximity labeling. And proximity labeling is different from IP or fractionation because the information is recorded while the cell is alive and intact. So to a region of interest or a protein of interest, uh, you can genetically target an enzyme that generates a reactive species that um, diffuses a way to tag surrounding proteins with a chemical handle such as biotin. And the reactive species will quench a few nanometers out. So only proteins proximal to the enzyme that is proximal to the region or protein of interest um, gets labeled. And then you can then use that chemical handle to pull down the tagged proteins and identify them using mass spectrometry. So two major tools that are currently used for proximally leading are APEX, a peroxidase-based method, and, um, which was developed in our lab, and BioID, a biotin ligase-based method. And both of these come with trade-offs. APEX is very fast, allowing short um, user-defined labeling windows to probe dynamic changes um, on the order of minutes. And, uh, however, APEX is toxic, uh, it requires hydrogen peroxide, which is toxic to cells. Uh, BioID, on the other hand, only requires biotin and no toxic reagents, so it's much more amenable for in vivo applications. However, BioID is slow and it requires labeling times of 18 hours or longer. Therefore, when I was in the Ting lab, I worked to develop a new tool that's both non-toxic and fast, so we can explore dynamic biological processes in a much wider variety of settings and organisms. Um, because we wanted the non-toxic labeling conditions, we knew we wanted to start with the biotin ligase-based method. Um, but how can we increase the efficiency of these slow enzymes? It's actually very difficult to do that using rational design. So we turned to nature's finest protein engineer, which is evolution. Um, to perform the directed evolution, we generated a library of ligase mutants and displayed them on the surface of yeast, where we can carry out the labeling under various conditions, and then use flow cytometry to separate out mutants that have high activity to expression ratios from those that have lower ones. And using that selection platform, we generated two mutants, uh, one with 14 mutations that we call Turbo ID, and a second mutant mini turbo that's smaller with a few trade-offs of turbo ID that I'm not gonna get into right now, but I'll be happy to discuss further with anyone who's interested. Uh, in contrast to bio ID, which requires this 18 hour labeling time, both mini turbo and turbo ID require as little as 10 minutes of labeling, sometimes less, and they have higher labeling yields, which gives high coverage um, proteomes and they maintain high specificity um, in those proteomes. So these faster, more efficient enzymes have allowed proximal labeling to be extended to several new biological questions and model systems that were previously inaccessible to the technique. And one of those areas which these enzymes have been proven very useful is for proteomic mapping in plants. Um, proximal labeling has gotten a slow start in plants. Uh, peroxidase-based methods like APEX don't really work very well because plants have a lot of their own peroxidases that can produce high background using the same substrates. Uh, in fact, all versions of proximity labeling peroxidases that are currently being used were all derived from plants. Um, so the chemistry employed by these uh, peroxidase-based methods like APEX isn't really compatible for proteomic mapping in plants because it's not orthogonal. Uh, there's been a couple of studies in plants using BioID, but in these studies, the bait protein had, there had to be highly overexpressed or the labeling yield was kind of low and resulted in a low coverage proteome. So this is due to the low catalytic activity of BioID, especially at the temperatures at which plants normally grow, which is below the optimal temperature of BioID, which is 37 degrees Celsius. 
Uh, turbo ID and mini turbo, on the other hand, were evolved in yeast, which grow at 30 degrees. So on top of the shorter labeling times um, required by the enzymes, they also retain higher activity at lower temperatures, which is enabled much higher labeling yields in organisms like plants that grow below 37 degrees. So for example, Dominique Brigman, which some of you may have heard in the first session of the workshop, showed that turbo ID and mini turbo give robust labeling in a couple different plant species compared to bio ID. Um, bio ID here is shown as beret star. And then they use turbo ID to map the interactum of a low abundance transcription factor and a rare transient cell type. Uh, other groups like the Dinesh Kumar group at um, Davis have also demonstrated higher activity of turbo ID compared to previous technologies in plants and then use turbo ID to identify regulators of immune receptors in plants, which they functionally validated by assessing their role in protection against infection. And our own organizer, Xiang Wang's group, has also been using turbo ID and some very cool work to map the interactors um, in substrates of a kinase called Bintu and Arabidopsis. So in summary, we have used directed evolution to develop this new proximity labeling tool that we hope is going to open many more biological questions for investigation in plants. Uh, thank you all for your time. And if you're interested, the original Turbo ID publication can be found in uh, Nature Biotechnology, and all of our plasmids are on adjunct, so please check them out. Okay, and I will...